Hey everyone, uh, I'm going to be covering um, income and social inequalities in the San Francisco area. Uh, I'm going to be reading from my notes because there's no way I was going to uh, memorize all of this. So um, I'm also going to try to do this in one take. So if I stumble a couple times, I apologize. So uh, I'm choosing to highlight uh, the sustainable development goals of one, which is no poverty. Uh, 10, which is reduced inequalities, and 11, which is sustainable cities and communities. Um, while there are many areas uh, that San Francisco, as well as most other cities, can improve in, I think that one, while it does garner a large amount of attention, uh, doesn't get the right kind of attention, and that's the widening uh, income and quality issues, as well as the increasing homeless population. Uh, which can actually be tied back to the first issue of income inequality. So uh, California is the wealthiest state in the country and it holds approximately 17% of the national net worth, uh, but it consists of only 12% uh, of the national population. And in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area specifically, the average zip code there has a net worth of over uh, $450,000 per resident making it the state's wealthiest region. Um, California itself has about 1,650 zip codes, um, and just 30 of these zip codes hold 20% of the state's wealth and only 2% of the state's population. Um, but these statistics don't paint a complete picture because while the Bay Area is in fact the wealthiest region in California, the, di the distribution of that wealth within the Bay Area is quite segregated. Uh, 11 of the zip codes in the Bay Area have a net worth of over $1.5 million per resident, while the net worth in about 15% of the Bay Area zip codes falls below $50,000 per resident. So, uh, The Bay Area is now and has been for decades facing a crisis of inequality. Uh, there's no shortage of reports about the ever-growing income gap as well as the mounting homelessness crisis in San Francisco. Um, while there are undoubtedly many factors that will determine whether or not an individual will find themselves homeless in San Francisco, the main culprit behind the homelessness crisis is not drugs or childhood trauma, um, but instead it's actually a matter of supply and demand. Um, there is an extremely high demand for affordable high, uh, housing in San Francisco, uh, while there is a very tiny and nearly non-existent supply of affordable high, uh, housing. So. Um, the homelessness crisis in San Francisco it really took off in the 80s, actually. Um, during the previous decades, affordable housing wasn't near as uh, scarce. Uh, the state still funded mental health institutions, uh, and it also had a number of social programs in place that helped lower-income residents and, and those suffering with drug addiction uh, and mental, um, mental health issues. So uh, it should be noted that New York City has a similar number of homeless residents as San Francisco. Uh, but while in San Francisco, 72% of the homeless population uh, are unsheltered, um, only 2% of the homeless population in New York City are unsheltered. And it's mainly because New York City has a very robust infrastructure uh, and a large amount of funding in place to actually deal with the homelessness crisis that they've experienced. So to address the homelessness issue, um, several ways, uh, the city could use zoning laws to protect the few areas that still contain affordable, medium, and low density housing. Uh, they could use site layout and structure requirements to control density of new developments or redevelopments. Uh, they could implement overlay districts uh, to protect at-risk areas. Uh, and they could also use uh, subdivision regulations to stop the hoarding of large parcels of land in urban as well as suburban neighborhoods. Um, the city can also off offer uh, larger incentives for developers to build affordable housings, uh, housing. That can be done by way of um, something called inclusionary zoning, uh, which actually allows developers to exceed uh, certain zoning standards, if, uh, standards if they agree to incorporate affordable housing into their development. Um, concerning income inequality, uh, San Francisco has actually taken a rather large step just in the last year, um, November of last year actually, by passing some legislation that will implement a tax on companies who see, whose CEOs make more than 100 times the pay of their median worker. Um, 
for every 100, it goes up up to uh, 600 uh, times, 0.6%. Uh, um, and that's gonna, it's not going to completely fix the income gap. Uh, it's definitely a start, though. Um, an additional step that should definitely be put in place is an increase in pay to an actual livable wage. So given the high cost of living in the region, the current minimum wage, which is $16.32, it's uh, still not enough to be considered a, a livable wage in the area. Um, many people are going to argue that you know, if you can't afford to live in the area, then you should just move. Well, that's, you know, for many people, that just isn't an option for any number of reasons. So um, really, it just needs to fall on the local government to uh, enact le legislation uh, that's going to allow citizens who are willing to work uh, to do so and be able to afford um, to not live in poverty, basically. So uh, assessing and measuring these two specific issues, uh, income inequality and homelessness, uh, Actually, pretty straightforward uh, because we already have tools in place that we use to um, measure these two things. Uh, so it's going to consist of surveys, polls, a collection of census data, uh, same processes, and some of the um, same people would still be involved. So it wouldn't be too hard to to measure that. So um, while I tried to cover at least the basics of these two problems, um, it would really take hours. Uh, to to present this in a way that would really under, uh, help you understand all the intricacies. So um, I hope I was able to at least give you some insight into the issues, and uh, I look forward to watching the rest of y'all's videos and hopefully learn some stuff myself.